What's happening, YouTube? Today, I bring you the Dragon Ball, SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Super Broly action figure review. Now, with this guy, as usual with most figure arts, there's, there's a lot to talk about. So, let's just get straight into it. Now, you know, as usual, sculpt first. My overall thoughts on the aesthetic of the figure. Um... The articulation and then of course accessories with this own segment now with this figure I would say that the likeness is pretty much on point it's something off just slightly off about it just ever so slightly off but I can't really put my finger on what that thing is but the likeness to the source material on point I think most funny enough before we get to it, I think most of the faces that come with this figure are some of the best uh, Saiyan faces that uh, Tamashi Nations has done. Um, if you one thing I want to note with this figure in particular, it is a matte figure for the most part. The legs have a little bit of shininess to it, but that's okay. If you're not gonna have a whole bunch of paint on your figure, make sure that it's matte. Because as I said, that shiny, glossy look ain't it. It makes the figure look cheap. Um, but with that aside, let's get into it. Um, this guy right here, man. Uh, I figured that I was super excited uh, that they made. I actually thought when this figure was... Like when the Broly movie had came out, I didn't think that they were going to actually make this figure. I thought they were going to do something like they did with the OG Broly and only make the super buff legendary Super Saiyan like form. But they decided to make the, you know, uh, still buff but less, you know, like uh, Kari state and his regular Super Saiyan form. Um, but anyways, first thing first, we start with the head. Head sculpt is on point. This yelling face is great. Now one thing I will say with this starting off is that this neck joint, the, you know, the, uh, where the neck connects to the, where the head connects to the neck, it is, it is okay. Uh, it doesn't move all that much. It doesn't have a lot of range of movement. If you really want to move the head, oh, you got to move the head popped off, but that's okay. You got to move this. You see, this neck right here has a lot of range of movement, a well, decent range of movement. That's where you're going to get most of your range from, this uh, bottom joint down here. Um, let me pop his head back on. Um, otherwise, and also trying to get him to look up, it's going to be difficult simply because of the hair and the armor. Well, the hair, mostly the hair. The hair back here is going to, like, is going to impede it from, um, looking all the way up. There's not much they could have did about that. I guess they could have tried to make it a movable piece, but... I don't know how that would have turned out. That might have been worse. I think I'd rather just be like that. Um, and that's going to go for all his head sculpts. The hair hanging down in the back is going to impede the, um, him from looking up. He can look up a little bit. I'll show some pictures at the end of the video so y'all can get a good idea uh, of that. But that's the head and neck uh, joint. As you, As per usual... Butterfly joint. You can put his hands together if you want him to. And it doesn't look too bad from the back either. I think they did this pretty well. This is probably one of the, one of the better done ones. His uh, shoulder pieces don't really get in the way. He can lift his arms up. No problem. Hinge joint. Hinge joint. Uh, double jointed uh, elbow. Uh, better than 90. Um, his big, uh, you know, his biceps are in the way. So you know he's a he's a bulky more bulky character so that's to be expected, uh, and he has a hinge joint at the wrist. Um, torso articulation on this guy is not very good at all actually. Like he can move forward a little bit, but you know due to the sculpt of the armor, this up uh, upper diaphragm piece right here and this uh, green piece right here. This green piece really impedes it from really crunching down like how it could. But it's not. there's only so much they could do about that. That's the, once again, character design thing. You got to consider that one uh, with these figures. 
but he can lean forward and that's mostly from this waist joint down here. He can swivel. Um, and he can lean back. Okay. So the torso articulation isn't the best. Oh, um, let's move down to the legs. Now the legs, the legs have a, a, a swivel to it. He can, let's start off, like he can do the splits. Oh shit, I popped his leg off. Oh no. Wait, hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. So, as I was saying, before his leg popped off, um, he could do almost perfect splits. The uh, the uh, skirt, you know, jacket thing, his little waistcoat uh, doesn't uh, get in the way at all. Um, if you want to move, double join it, double hinge uh, knee. Um, even the uh, skirt piece is kind of articulated. So that's a very good thing that they did there because that could have end easily ended up uh, impeding on the articulation. Um, his hinge joint and the ankle goes down about that far. It goes up not too far because these uh, little uh, things on his ankle impede the movement. Once again, a, a character design thing that's going on there. Okay, now we're going to go over accessories. As for accessories, he doesn't come with a whole lot, but what he comes with, I think, makes the figure complete. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through it. He comes with the two open palm kind of grab, like grabbing hands. He comes with another open palm hand, but this set of open palm hands is less grabby. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. He comes with two fist hands. And he comes with three different, three very different heads, actually. He comes with the base, his base hair, before he transforms into anything. He comes with his Akari hair, which is what he had on for a majority of the video. And he comes with the Super Saiyan hair. I think that's roughly all he needed. I think if I could add another accessory, maybe a blast effect. But I think that's all he really needs. Like the grabby hands is good for like if you want to pose him. I don't know, like how he he was dragging Super Saiyan God Goku's face through the uh, iceberg across uh, against the iceberg when he was fighting in the movie. But overall, I would say articulation is like a seven point five out of ten. The overall look of the figure is 8.5 out of 10. Um, paint, paint work, sculpt work, uh, 8 out of 10. This is a solid, this is a pretty solid release. I think the articulation is the weakest point of this figure. Like the ankles and the torso, they definitely need work. The arms and the uh, leg, the rest of the legs. Like uh, you know the knees, the splits. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't show how much he could kick back. He could kick back decently far. So they definitely once once again, as much as I've been harping on it, like the 3.0 body, which is the body that Super Saiyan 4 Goku comes on, they're definitely gonna have to work on that for uh you know being able to move the legs back like that. But overall, I get the figure. Uh, Overall, I would say that the rating for this figure is 8 out of 10. It's definitely a solid release. Definitely not a weak release. Um, if they improve on the articulation, it's mainly the articulation that's bringing this figure down. If they improve on the articulation for the next figure, uh, it'll, it'll be good money. But, but with that being said, stay tuned for the pictures at the end. And until the next time, the reverse flow out.